Hey guys, uh, Matt Gabriel here. I'm back once again with another overview and review. And today we are reviewing or doing a little overview of possibly my favourite point and shoot, the Olympus XA. Um, it's a very highly commended camera, and it's one which probably has a lot you may have heard of or has been talked about, especially the XA range. Um, in general, you've probably heard of if you're watching this video. Um, so I'm going to talk about my opinions, my what it can do, and um, in general, just how I feel about this camera. So first of all, the main thing you'll notice when you first pick it up is the size. So it's really small, fits in the in the hand there, and this is what's known as a uh, clamshell design. So. I personally really like this because you've got this cover which slides across which protects the lens and then it can go in your pocket like that and you just pull it across like that. Uh, mine has a bit of a defect at the bottom but it doesn't stop the way that it works at all. Um, so we'll get into the lens. It's a rangefinder, full coupled rangefinder there so you look through the viewfinder and you see the rangefinder patch and you line it up. It's also got uh, the option to do zone focusing uh, if you want to shoot from the hip um, set the ISO there you can also this is also uh, aperture priority camera so you can change the f-stop and it goes down to f22 all the way to f2.8 which is pretty much the standard when it comes to point and shoots a good point and shoot will go down to f2.8 so you know that it's good uh, the Olympus XA which I used for quite a while uh, when I first got into film photography, it only goes down to f3.5 and was a four element lens, whereas this is a six element lens, so it should be that a little bit sharper. Um, so, this coupling, uh, you look through the range point, through the viewfinder, look for the patch, it works okay. Um, some of this, some of these cameras will have quite a dim viewfinder do dim range finder patch and uh, this is actually my second one of this camera uh the first one did have a very dim patch and i had to sell it um another thing so if we move down to the top uh, you'll see the counter there and also the shutter uh, a lot of compl people complain and i complain about the first version of this first camera that i had of this olympus xa which i had to sell the shutter is very very sensitive it's a leaf shutter i think um i can't remember the exact word i think it might be a leaf shutter but you just tap it and it and it fires now norm that is pretty this shutter is pretty unsensitive in that sense because i fully have to press it down before the um before it actually fires. Um, so for me that works better because it's less sensitive and I'll let, have less mistake, mistaken shots. Um, so if we go on to here, this is just the mechanism to open the back. So you, it's pretty, pretty simple. Just lift it up and the back springs open. Load the film, put the leader in here, wind it on, you've got a little catch there so it's a bit more secure than some and advances like that just as you would expect with any other film camera. So on the bottom we've got the battery, uh, it takes LR22s I think, uh, same ones that the Olympus OM10, uh, Pentax Me Super, a lot of uh, kind of halfway between automatic and manual cameras take and that's to power the light meter which this camera has a fully working light meter. On the bottom you've got a Ex exposure compensation by 1.5 um, stops so that's to do with if your subject is backlit by the sun you can compensate that way got a battery check as you can hear and you've also got a self timer which works as you would expect there's a little beeping sound you run away and uh, it takes a <laughs> very old style of a selfie so there you go, you heard it fire. Um, so that's pretty much it, very intuitive. Uh, if you know about photography, you'll know about how to use the f-stops and how that can be really useful. Uh, if you look in the viewfinder, which I'm 
unfortunately I can't show you uh, very well but there's like a little needle which goes shows, tells you the shutter speed um, and that works really well so you just look to the left and see the little needle going up and down and um, that works really well t and the light shows you that the light meter is working the battery is working um, so you'll notice that there's no flash and that is my main negative when it comes to this camera you can't use this at dark, in the dark so you can't really use this as like a party camera or as a fun camera um, and that's the main reason why I don't use it at the moment because it's not summer when it gets to summer I'll probably use it more because the chances that it's going to be dark are obviously a lot less than in the winter when it's dark all the time and depressing but the flash works really uh, easily you just change it so that the little slide at the top goes all the way to the flash the flash will pop up, start charging. It uses the Olympus's A11 flash. You can just, uh, change between ASA, ISO 100 or 400. Um, I'm not too sure with that. The light pops up and then the light turns on and then the flash goes off as expected. So let's talk about some of the disadvantages first so the flash it's fiddly to use and bulky as well so you're less likely to use this camera in a flash situation the the shutter can be very sensitive that's a disadvantage and the rangefinder patch can be dim but it also cannot be so this camera does not have a very dim it's not dim it's a good uh, patch the shutter is not sensitive on this camera, so it's a bit temperamental between what you buy. Um, you may have to ask for very specifics when you're buying this on eBay, or you may have to actually look at it yourself. Um, but from there, um, another disadvantage would be the pace of focusing. If you're using an autofocus camera or a camera like the Olympus XA2, you can obviously focus or choose your focus a lot faster than this camera is you've got to look for the viewfinder and move the rangefinder patch um, it's very fast to do that but obviously it's another step especially when it comes to something like street photography um, obviously you can put it in like three meters away and it will most likely be in focus but you've got that um, little thing there which makes the time to focus greater but it is good if you don't worry about what time it's going to take to focus so let's talk about the photos itself so I'm going to put up some sample photos now um, and you'll see straight away that the camera is incredibly sharp um, I don't really have ever used pro film but you can see that the sharpness of the images are really strong and they are quite um, what's the word like the subject is really sh well shown well lit um, they they stand out from their background because of how sharp the subject is compared to the background um, you can get some good bokeh on this as well with the f2.8 and just all around in general this does give uh, really great images um, also fits in your pocket really well and um, that's really all there is to say to it it's a great point and shoot camera for getting those kind of like artistic tones as well um, people compare it to like the same uh, functionalities as a Leica in terms of the, the tones that are given um, and I can see that I mean I'm never going to buy a Leica so if this is the closest that I can get to those kind of uh, that kind of look that's really great for me and in this size as well um, you know it's really small and compact compared to carrying a massive SLR around um, but still getting really incredible photos and you wouldn't think for the size that you'd get such good photos from it but it all just works really well and really well designed so those, that's my review of the Olympus XA uh, if you have any questions you can comment down below or you can reach me on Instagram at Matt 20, mattgabriel21 um, all the information is going to be in the description this is a great camera it's recommended by a lot of people and definitely something I would check out if you're looking to improve your image quality in terms of point and shoots 
or just in general once you've got over the basics of film photography or if you have a lot of big cameras and you want to get a point and shoot that's a good quality point and shoot not going to break the bank about 60 pounds on ebay and um you'll have a great time with it you will um really enjoy this camera and there's a reason why i have not sold it and don't intend to sell it so thank you for watching uh this has been matt gabriel uh, and i hope you have a great day